Okay, now I am playing Caesar 3. I am using the Augustus mod, which is a fork of the Julius mod. I'll have links to both of them in the uh, video description, uh, which brings or tries to bring Caesar 3 up to more modern gaming standards. And I think it's an excellent mod and makes the game much easier to play. It has three pages of options. Uh, you can set it up to whether or not you want to play the intro videos. Uh, you can have extra information in the control panel, which is really handy because that, that's going to give you uh, settings where you can adjust the speed. It'll also show you uh, your unemployment levels and other uh, uh, goals such as culture and peace and imperial favor. Uh, Actually, not sure what Draw Walker Waypoints does, but. And on page two, you can fix the immigration bug on Very Hard. I almost never play on Very Hard, but I left it selected. You can also fix 100 year old ghosts so that uh, there, there's a, a glitch in the game, in the base game, where once people reach 100 years old, they, they obviously have died, but they are still listed as being part of your city and taking up uh, population spots. Also, uh, it's set so that grand festivals will allow for an extra blessing from a god. So if uh, in, the, in the base game, you have to, once you get your blessing from, say, from Mars at the beginning of the game, in order to get another blessing, you have to piss off Mars and get him to... Uh, curse your city and then you have to raise his favor back up to uh, exalted so he'll give you another blessing uh, this setting just makes it so that you don't have to go through that mess get a uh, global labor pool so you don't have to have uh, uh, shanty towns or just little you know tents scattered around your city and also extend the school walker range so that they can go around larger blocks. I don't know if this one is really needed, but I've got it enabled anyhow. Uh, change the citizens' retirement age from 50 to 60. That's just so they'll they'll work longer. Because who needs to retire anyhow, right? Then you can have the houses stockpile more goods from markets so that they don't run out of food or uh, pottery as fast. immediately destroy buildings so once you mark a building for destruction it just goes away rather than you having to wait for a few seconds just for the really impatient and then you've got the setting where cart pushers from getting granaries can go off road just like uh, cart pushers from uh, uh, warehouses that are set to get a certain good can go off road now this will allow the uh, granaries cart pushers to do the same so if a granary isn't necessarily connected to your wheat farms, it could still send a carter out to get the wheat. You could also, if you want to, double the capacity of cart pushers. So rather than uh, your cart pusher uh, doing 800, it would do 1600 wheat. That, that feels a little cheaty to me. Uh, you got tower sentries don't need road access from the barracks you still need to actually put a road in front of the tower for some wildly crazy reason but you don't need to have a road connection from the tower to the barracks and that way also you don't need excess roads and you don't have to again have shanty towns near your uh, near your towers You've got farms and wars to deliver only nearby granaries. So, and this is really helpful on huge maps because it, when the nearby granaries get full in the base game, the, the carters will actually go to a granary all the way across on the other side of the map to deliver their wheat or, or fruit or whatever. And then have to walk all the way back. And that's really going to slow your process down. With this setting, they will, once the nearby granaries get full, they will wait for one of them to... Uh, empty out enough for their delivery and then they'll go deliver to the nearby granary rather than walking all across the map this does essentially the same thing 
so that food, uh, when the nearby granaries get full, the car pushers aren't going to send food to granaries that are set to getting goods. You can have all your houses merge into uh, one large house rather than having you know, like uh, just four single houses that merge into one. You can have your uh, trade routes count as providing different types of wine, which eh, maybe, except not all trade ports sell wine, so I don't know if I really want to do that. That's another one that feels kind of cheaty to me. Not too sure what that one does, because I don't know what collapsing clay pits and iron mines cost before, to be honest. I thought it was just the cost of rebuilding them, but whatever. And then you can allow building multiple barracks, so you can build, you don't have to use the, uh, the exploit where you build your two barracks and then you get the road connection. Here with this setting, you can just build them, and you can build more than two if you want. And of course you've got the hotkeys, which is great because that lets you set it up so you can use your WASD keys to navigate the map rather than having to click and drag all the time or pull on your pointer going to the edge of the screen. Otherwise I haven't really changed any of the hotkeys. Alright, so I'm going to, for this first uh, video in the series. I'm just going to go through the first two missions, which are really easy. Basically just tutorial missions to familiarize you with the interface. Uh, I don't know what I was typing there. Let your governorial training begin. First, you must learn the basics of constructing Roman settlements. Build areas of housing, and you'll soon see people move into your city. You can click and drag the mouse to build lengths of path at once. Plan paths carefully, with as few intersections as possible, to ensure people will walk where you want them to. At every intersection, walkers must choose which way to go. Each intersection lessens your control over their actual routes. Now we had another uh, cool feature of the uh, Augustus mod is uh, also I believe in the Julius mod uh, you can use your scroll wheel on these dialogues rather than having to uh, press the down arrow a million times or click and drag this little ball right here of course we've got all these neat new features in the game and I barely use them because uh, I'm not used to them Another uh, neat feature is when you have a dialogue up, you can right click on it to get rid of it, so you don't have to always try to click on this little arrow down here. Something I'm still getting used to. Now, when I start this, I usually, because I've played it so many times, I can just set it on 100%. With this mod, you can actually go up to 500% speed, which is just ridiculous. All right, so start out by clearing an area for my houses. And I put in twenty houses on this side of the road and twenty houses on this side of the road. And we just drop down some wells so these find people that have some water. And as you can see the wells actually outline the area that they're gonna cover. So as you can see a uh, well covers an area five by five basically. Oops, and there we've had our first fire, and I don't even have all my wells built yet. I am slacking. Let's put up the prefecture. There. Cut the road right there so he doesn't walk too far. Oh, this there because I'm going to eat it. get a collapse here in just a moment.
There it is. So, so now we just throw down the nearest post. And of course, we want to cause more people to move in. One thing I wish they had done in the in the base game was on these uh, on these little tutorial messages came up. These should have also been uh, voiced. But now we can start building our temples and went. Don't even have to build all of them. Although in the Augustus mod, it gives you an option you can click on all, and that will actually let you build all of the. You don't even have to build any of them, but that lets you build all of the temples in sequence. So uh, you don't have to constantly move back and forth clicking the thing. It just helps uh, prevent you from getting uh, pains in your wrist from moving your mouse too much. Set the promotion. Congratulations. You have grasped the basics to my satisfaction. In the interest of advancing your education, I have one more gentle assignment for you. Onward to Brundisium. Priorities should be security, housing, food, and water in that order. Without housing and food, new immigrants will not move into your city. Rome now wishes your city to grow food. Build a farm on fertile land. Look for the yellow tufts that indicate this. Connect it to housing with a path. If the housing is too far away, the farm will not get access to labor. Build a granary near to the farm and make sure that it too has access to labor. When the wheat is ripe, a cart will carry it to the granary. Gradually, the granary will fill up. The fewer empty windows you can see, the fuller the granary is. All right, I don't know why this last part wasn't voiced, but it's basically just explaining about building markets and market ladies, how they work. Okay. Well, now on this map, I want to go ahead and just for the start, I want to slow it down a little bit. Clear a big old swath of land here. 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 That will come up. So. Fine. Yeah. Want three spaces here. And I am a big fan of the 9x9 block on these grassland maps because it works very well. And on this map, you can, uh, on this scenario, you can uh, finish it with just one 9x9 block. You don't have to uh, actually build any more than that. Houses in Prefecture there and there. Go up to hundred. Come the pitbulls. 
Okay. Wait, put our temples to the gods. There. Go. Now the reason why I put a gap right there is because I want to put in a roadblock, which is a new tile included in the Augustus mod, that prevents walkers from going past it. So since I have the global uh, labor pool turned on, the granary can still get employees. But the walkers down here can't go through this four-way intersection, which is just annoying. Okay, where am I? I got seven unemployed, so let's go ahead and put in houses. And just to appease these folks, I'm going to go ahead and drop down some wells. Here. I want to go ahead. Farms. They're going to need their own prefecture. And a post. There we go. Now we can uh, build our reservoirs and aqueducts and fountains. Allow us to have even more people. For our first reservoir, we want there. And that's why I drew the road out right there, because I wanted to make sure that even though they could walk around here because it's not it's eventually going to be closed up over here and it might block the road to Rome which would cause problems okay all the gods are happy that's nice drop in the senate just to look up a bit deployment Ah, putting out gardens in here. That's one trick I like to do with uh, buildings that take up two, two or more spaces is just set it so that only one of those spaces is actually on the road at the corner here so that it doesn't give as much unhappiness in the area.
too much unemployment. Now I can build a pottery industry. And here in just a moment it'll also give me a message about trade routes. Now, another cool, really cool feature about this, uh, you can actually tell it who you want to be able to collect stuff from. Warehouse. You can turn the warehouse off. And you can also, in here, uh, the most important button is this one right here. It sets everything to not accepting. So, I mean, right now it's no big deal because you just got three things on here. But uh, later on, when this list is full, that button is really going to come in handy. Of course, I forgot I could just re right click that. Um, picture and here's post because we don't want that collapsing. Then, let's toss down play pits. And then a couple of shops. Go. And just for the hell of it, I can down the bathhouse. But click the button for it. If you run short of employees, you can just kill one of these farms down here because you really only need four of them. All right now we can trade. Hey, what do you know? He buys pottery. I could, of course, also buy iron from him and make weapons to sell back to him. We're not going to be in this long enough to mess with that. Great over two units. And now we wait. Because here comes the wind. There we go. You know, the first two levels are very easy. It, as I mentioned earlier, they're really just tutorial missions meant to get you familiar with the interface and basic city building. Make sure you know you've got to build your houses, of course. You've got to supply water. You've got to supply food. And you've got to watch out for your uh, the happiness of the gods. And 
you got to keep people employed because employed people are happy people. <laughs> you learn quickly. You now have the skills to complete a real assignment. From now on, you can choose your career's direction. Take the more peaceful province to concentrate on gardening, or the more dangerous one to confront Rome's enemies. All right, well, now, as he said, we get, from here on out, we get to choose our mission. We can do a peaceful mission, or we can do a dangerous mission. I like to do the dangerous missions just because I like having enemies attack every once in a while. It does make the game a little bit more challenging, although doing the peaceful playthroughs is just relaxing because you can just build your city and watch it run, and you don't have to worry about people attacking you unless you piss off Mars. So this is where we'll pick up in the uh, next video. I will be doing Tarentum, a slightly dangerous province. Hope you enjoyed the video.